Hey guys, Andy here, and welcome to a brand new episode of Q and Andy Japandi, where I answer your questions about life in Japan. So question number one, do you consider Japan as a highly developed and advanced country? Well, I do think that Japan is most definitely a first world country. It's not exactly the technological powerhouse that it used to be back in the 80s and 90s. Um, it does have a lot of the same accoutrements as uh, back in America, but it also does use some older, more outdated technology like fax. And there's also a huge reliance on paper for administrative work. So they've been very hesitant to really keep up with the times. Question number two, how would you personally rate Japan from culture to technology, architecture, food, local products, scenery, landscape, standard of living, quality of life, etc., on a scale level of one to 10? To me personally, I don't really like doing rating scales. I find it's very subjective. You know, the stuff that I like may not be something you jive with. And plus, who am I to say what's good and not about Japan, right? These are all just my own opinions. So I'm not gonna deal with things on terms of like between a scale of one to 10. You know, where do you rank Japan? I will say the culture is very interesting. It's a lot different than America. It's had a lot more time to develop than America because it's only, you know, 200 some years old, America is, while well, Japan is several thousands of years old. Um, the technology, like I said in the first question, is not really as innovative as it used to be, but still very first world. Uh, the architecture, yeah, it's kind of a mixed bag really because like the modern architecture I feel is very plain Jane, samey samey. Uh, but the traditional architecture I think is really interesting. Uh, food's great. And one of the things, and I'll talk briefly about this. One of the things about Japanese food is that while yes, the domestic food is of course outstanding, but something that doesn't really get talked about a whole lot is the amount of international cuisine in Japan because a lot of people, especially if you're living near the Tokyo area, tend to come to Tokyo to open a restaurant. And you get a lot of very high-end restaurants in Tokyo serving food from all around the world. And it's very, very good. And you know, of course, the scenery and the landscape is very iconic and just a joy to be around. But I'd say the most important thing that I like about Japan is the standard and quality of living. I live in a guest house. It's not really all that big, but it doesn't really cost me a whole lot of money either. And as a student, I'd say it's a very good way to get out to Japan, make your start out in the country. And then once you develop a bit of a savings through your job, then move out to a proper apartment. But just the fact that they offer these guest houses is definitely very nice and allows you to live very cheaply in Japan. So question number 30, what is your overall impression with the Japanese people? I'd say, you know, you hear a lot of stories and I think I've told a couple of them as well about bad experiences of Japanese people, you know, a lot of xenophobia, racism even. But really, I'd say overall, the Japanese people have been some of the kindest, most generous, heartwarming people that I've come across. And once you get to know them, you know, you find that they're very honest people. And yeah, you're gonna get a couple shitbirds thrown in there here and there, um, especially from the older generation who aren't too used to people who ain't from around these here parts, to uh, put it mildly. But uh, the younger generation are very, open to foreigners more so than the older generation but there are a couple couple of old folk out there who are very open to new experiences from international people and i think it also depends a lot on where you are in japan whereas you know if you're in tokyo a lot of the people unless you know them are very cold and distant and once you get to know them, they're very open, friendly, and gregarious. And it's just like, wow, you were not this person <laughs> when I was talking to you just a few minutes ago. Okay, cool. You know, if you go to other parts in Japan, uh, like down south in the uh, the Shonan Beach area in Kanagawa, there's a lot of very friendly people out there and the culture is just so vibey to say the least. It reminds me a lot of, you know, when I was stationed out in San Diego. And I've never been to Kansai before, but I have a lot of friends in Kansai and they say that, especially in Osaka, 
that's known as like some of the most friendly, open Japanese people. So I definitely want to go out there and see it for myself. And question number four. If you have three words or more to describe Japan, what would it be? I'd say that Japan is not what you think it is. While me and a bunch of other JVlogger type people making videos about life in Japan often paint Japan as this sort of rose-colored place of wonder and weeby euphoria and stuff like that. Um, it is a country like any other and it does have its ups and downs, but it's not exactly what you think it is. You know, life here is very different once you're living here versus just visiting for a week or so. It can be very difficult, especially going through like the language barrier, dealing with a lot of administrative stuff. You know, if you have to go to the government office to work on your visa or fill out some paperwork or whatever, it can be a little daunting to do stuff like that because, you know, for me, I'm very much a worry wart whenever I have to go to immigration for anything because I'm worried that I'm going to like write something wrong and they're going to send it back, fail to provide paperwork at this amount of time and I'm going to lose my visa and I have to go back to America. It's just I'm, I'm just a ball of nerves whenever I have to go to immigration. But I'd say for me, you know, the pros definitely outweigh the cons of living here in Japan. And I think that's the same for anywhere you live. So if the pros outweigh the cons, then I think it's a great place to be because no country is perfect, but Japan is pretty darn good for me. Question number five. Did living in Japan for the first time feel overwhelming with the different culture, language, and scenery? Yeah, I'd say Japan was definitely overwhelming for me when I was first stationed out in Yokosuka. I had done a lot of research on Japan as far as like daily life stuff, you know, getting a train pass, knowing where to go for different sites and things like that. But even still, it was very stimulating to say the least. And I didn't realize just how much sensory overload there is, especially in Tokyo. There's just so much to do, so many lights and sounds and sights, and it's all very densely packed. And it can be very overwhelming, especially if you've never been in a big city like that before. And, you know, I come from a small town in Ohio, so we definitely don't have stuff like that there. But it was also kind of exciting, too, because there's a new place. It's a place I've always wanted to go to. And I was finally there getting to see the sights and uh, meet the people. Question number six. What's your favorite thing about Japan that America didn't have for you? Now, it's kind of ironic because America is known as the land of opportunity. But I'd say for me, Japan had opportunity that America, quite frankly, just didn't have for me. Um, for those who don't know, I'm a freelance video editor and camera operator out here in Japan. And that's basically been my part-time job since arriving over two years ago. And I didn't have those sorts of opportunities when I was back in America because nobody really wanted to take a chance on me. You know, I was an unproven commodity. And no matter how much I told people, you know, I have all this experience and I got this camera equipment, you know, give me a chance, you know, put me in coach. They just didn't want to take a chance on me. But people here in Japan, especially people I've networked with, are much more open to taking a chance on me. And I've proven time and time again that my work is good and I get a whole lot of repeat business. Repeats and referrals, that's pretty much how I made my living out here in Japan, aside from the GI Bill, of course. And it's something that I want to pursue full time once I graduate. And I think, you know, I definitely have the skills, I definitely have the resume. I think it's very much a possibility for me here. Whereas back in America, I'd have to go to LA or New York to even have an opportunity to do something like that. And it's not even guaranteed because there's so many other people that go to those big cities and they get eaten alive and they're very expensive to live in. And it's just hard to get yourself uh, situated out there if you don't have a plan. In Japan, especially in the Tokyo area, I know a lot of articles say, oh, Tokyo is one of the most expensive cities in the world to live in. How could anybody possibly live there? And the thing is, and I'll make a dedicated video about this at some point, because it's definitely a topic I'm very passionate about, and I want to explain this to people more concisely. The gist of it is that Tokyo can be expensive, but it doesn't have to be. There are definitely ways to live very cheaply out here. You just have to have an open mind 
and have a careful eye on your budget, but you can get by out here just fine if you're uh, paying attention. So I'll just leave it at that for now and look out for a dedicated video coming at some point. Question number seven, how much Japanese do you know? Now, I'll be totally honest about this. I don't know a whole lot of Japanese. I do know like Japanese words and can get by through like a day to day type stuff. But as far as having like a conversation with a Japanese person, it's not really doable for my level of Japanese. And it's also been a major hindrance for me getting employment out here as well. So that's something that I told myself I was going to dedicate and work on once I graduate because uh, when I went back to the States initially, I signed up for some Japanese classes and I had a really hard time with uh, learning Japanese in that environment. And it's just because I didn't really take it all that seriously. You know, I figured, well, I lived in Japan for two years. You know, I got this shit. It's fine. But there's a lot of time and effort that needs to get put into to learn Japanese. And I just told myself, hey, I just don't have it right now while I'm in school because the most important part for me right now in this moment is to graduate, get that bachelor's degree, get that paper, and then afterwards dedicate myself to studying Japanese and uh, get out there and uh, get a good job and talk with the locals and uh, all that fun stuff because learning the language definitely opens a lot of doors, not just career-wise, but also with new friends and new experiences. And I highly recommend that you do learn the language before you come here, but you don't have to be like super fluent at Japanese to get by out here. Question number eight. What's it like banking in Japan and commuting around or do you just keep it all close to the guest house? That's like several questions all rolled into one here. Uh, so for banking in Japan, I just got the very basic like web banking account. I didn't get like a traditional Japanese bank account with the bank book and all this other shit. I just needed something to where I can put money into and take money out of. Didn't need anything too serious. So I just got a very basic account. Uh, there's a lot of different banks out here that you can get it from. Citibank, Bank of Yokohama, Shinsei Bank. Um, get set up with like a, I think they call it like web bank. Each branch calls it some, some a little different, but it's basically just online banking. They give you a little bank card that you put into the ATM to withdraw money. You also get like a little debit card as well that you got to transfer money from your bank account to, to uh, like buy stuff online and whatnot. I just use it mostly for day-to-day -day stuff as well as getting paid through uh, some clients who are adamant about paying through a Japanese bank account. That's the whole reason I even got it to begin with was I had this client didn't want to deal with PayPal and none of this other stuff and I was like I need a Japanese bank account to wire this money to and it was a pretty big client so I was like all right I guess I'll have to get one right now as far as commuting um for the first two years pretty much my entire time since I've been back in Japan I haven't really needed to commute all that much it wasn't until well beginning of this semester where I had to start commuting regularly back and forth to school. Uh, so before that, I did everything at home. I did work from home. I did school from home. Honestly, if I didn't want to leave my guest house for any reason, I didn't have to. I could get food ordered. I could get stuff from Amazon. Like I said, I do work at school from home. So I got all my bases covered and I don't even have to fucking leave if I don't want to. But that being said, if you don't leave after a while, it starts to play with your play with your head brain there so i would recommend getting out touching some grass from time to time and uh, remind yourself that you are a human being <laughs> getting out there and doing stuff you know obviously do it safely considering the uh situation but you know get out there and do stuff so as far as commuting goes uh my school is out in ryogoku which is in east tokyo and i am just a little south of west tokyo in kawasaki so not gonna lie, it is a bit of a trek. It's almost an hour and a half in some cases, depending on what train line I take. So yeah, it's a bit rough, but again, I live in a very cheap guest house. If I just need to get to Shinjuku or Shibuya, it's actually a lot easier. But because my school moved from Shinjuku to Ryogoku, uh, it's a little bit of a longer commute, but hey, I only got three months left before I graduate. So it's not gonna be a long-term problem for me at all. 
So question number nine. I'm just curious, when it comes to filling out forms and getting around, understanding your environment, stuff like that, is it easy? Is there people always around to translate? Stuff like that. I did talk about this a little bit earlier. Japanese is my major weakness right now, and especially writing and reading Japanese. Now, I definitely know more now than uh, when I was first stationed in Yokosuka, where I couldn't read or write at all. But that being said, it's definitely lacking, I would say. And if you know Japanese, then your quality of life is gonna be much higher. So if you're not quite there yet, I would recommend using Google Translate on your phone. They have this uh, little feature in the app where you can turn on your camera and it just like auto translates stuff that you point to. It's not perfect, but it will at least give you an idea of what they're trying to say. So you can at least get the gist of what it is. And question number 10, the perfect 10. Do you regret being in Japan? And are you there for good now? And do you want to be there for at least a while longer now? Cause it's already been some time. Overall, how are you feeling about everything? So once again, this is like a whole mess of questions <laughs> rolled into one. As far as do I regret being in Japan? I think I've already made a video talking about that. And I might make another one once uh, I'm all graduated and can really review things in full. The gist of it is no, I don't regret being in Japan. And looking back, the timing was picture perfect. I had no idea about, you know, Colony Macaroni back in 2019. You know, just moving there right before everything shut down and just getting there right when my school started doing bachelor's programs. It just all seemed to fall into place for me out here in Japan. So, no, I do not regret being in Japan or coming here when I did. It did have a lot of down times where uh, I was really questioning myself and my sanity, but overall, I think I made the right choice coming here. And as far as if I'm here for good now, again, I've talked about this before, but the main thing for me now is finding a job that'll support my visa, allow me to continue to stay here. Uh, but I am gonna be looking for that. I have up to a year to find a job once I graduate. And from there, just carry on smartly with uh, living in Japan. And as far as do I want to be here for a little while longer? Yes, yes I do. Now as far as how long, I don't know yet. Am I going to be here forever and ever? Forever is a long time. And as we know from 2020, a lot can change in just a little bit of time. So I don't want this to be like poorly aged things where I say, yeah, I'm here forever, guys. I'm packing it in. It's happening. A lot of things can change and a lot of opportunities can reveal themselves to where I would need to move back to the States. I'm just keeping an open mind with things, but as far as me personally, I would definitely love to stay in Japan if I'm able to and continue to carve a life out here for myself. And overall, how am I feeling about everything? Well, right now it's, there's a lot of uncertainty because of the job market and I don't really have anything solid lined up just yet. I do have uh, my freelance gigs that I'm gonna be relying on pretty heavily until I find something a bit more substantial out here. Overall, I'm feeling pretty hopeful for once. <laughs> you know, uh, what happened two years ago really took the wind out of my sails in more ways than one. And I'm just glad that I just trucked along through it and I'm gonna make it out the other side just fine with that paper in my hand and a tear in my eye. Even if it all falls apart for me out here in Japan, I at least can look back and say, hey, I got my bachelor's degree for what it's worth. But, you know, I set a goal for myself. It took a long fucking time to complete, but I fucking did it, you know? So even if Japan doesn't work out and I have to go back to America, I could hold my head up high and say no regrets. So yeah, guys, that was Q&A in Japan, where I answer your questions about life here in Japan. And before we close things out, I do want to go over some updates. I'll try to keep it as brief as I can. Uh, famous last words, of course. I just started my final semester at Lakeland University of Japan. It's also my first semester since the beginning of my time at Lakeland, back in early 2020, where I was actually attending in-person classes. So it's a lot different being in person in class for the first time in two years. It is a good feeling to uh, finally meet a lot of people that I've seen in Zoom rooms and such and meet in person and hanging out after class and stuff like that. It's also a bit bittersweet because it 
took until my very last semester to finally meet some people. And I know a lot of them are gonna be leaving once they're all graduated. But this semester is hopefully going to be my easiest yet because I only have three classes. They're just the uh, last remaining classes that I need to complete my major. And from there, graduate, get that paper, and move on to the next piece of business. Now, as far as YouTube stuff goes, I know I've been pretty quiet. And the reason being, and I've talked about this in uh, my last video, was that after the previous semester, I needed to take a full break from things. Now, I did stream a little bit, going outside, touching grass, looking at stuff. And I did say I wanted to focus on that a little bit more, but considering the costs of the data plan and stuff like that, I don't know if it'll be like a major focus moving forward. It is something that I do want to do though, but I think for now, especially with uh, school wrapping up, it's just going to be like an every once in a while sort of thing. So be sure your notifications turned on, hit the bell, all that YouTuber stuff. You'll get notified whenever I go live whenever I go live, right? But as far as like other non live stream YouTube type stuff, I'll be honest, you know, I've been dealing with a lot of burnout from last semester, just going way too fucking hard. So I really needed that full break to just um, rest and uh, recompose myself. And I definitely do feel a lot better. But as far as content for this channel, I don't really know what I'm gonna be doing moving forward because like obviously you know there's people gonna be saying well just make stuff about japan i mean you live in japan fucking get out of your little apato and uh, get outside touch grass right and that's definitely something i do want to do but as far as like the main focus of the channel because like every other jag off with a camera here in japan does that stuff so i want to have a bit more of a of a different focus so i do want to try out some things just kind of see how i like them and if I can incorporate them into my channel. I do like doing YouTube, but I wanna make it right sized for me. You know, I don't want to just do the trendy stuff just cause it's trendy. But at the same time, I don't wanna do stuff that's so esoteric to where like my mom and maybe two of her friends are the only ones watching my videos, giving me like a good job, Andy, <laughs> in the comments. You know, once I graduate, I won't really be a student anymore, obviously. So my focus on studying abroad in Japan will shift. Um, I'll still talk about it from time to time, but not nearly as much as, as I do now. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much all I got. So yeah, with that said, this is Andy. Sign up for now. As always, forever. We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.